This video is how we prototyped, molded, and then casted large limestone equipment structures for a Department of Defense project. These equipment structures were specifically designed to cover a non-lethal vehicle barrier or resting system that provides the ultimate security while reducing the likelihood of injury to vehicle occupants during an unauthorized entry at military installations. In these last couple of clips, I've shown the boxes being used to cover my well at home. Whereas in this photo, the apparatus is an installed barrier and my red line drawing is just illustrating how our boxes are being applied to the project. Whereas the red line between these boxes would be the road separating the boxes. Now I'm just going to detail how we made the prototypes, starting out with a foam box just to give the basic shape to which we then started adding cultured stone to rock the box and give us the actual dimensions, outside dimensions that we were looking for that was specified to us. So again, just laying up cultured stone. The reason I used the styrofoam, it was a pretty good box, but the mud would stick to it nicely. It had a good surface and uh, it was uh, this the fastest way I could make the box. So again, laying the stone all over the, the uh, three sides, because the one side that's closest to the door there is going to fit up against the box. So they've got all the stone now on this first box, and we're starting the second box, the bigger box. And again, they're just putting this together with sheet foams, and I had Skyler put some cardboard boxes inside, which was just to keep the shape to where the the foam wouldn't bow in because of the boxes. Believe it or not, that would add enough rigidity to the whole assembly as a uh, form to lay up the uh, stone on. So again, now they're going to start laying the stone all over the bigger box. They're finishing up the smaller box. And I was incorrect. Right here on this side of the box where the white foam is, that box goes into the bigger box. So there's no need for anything there because the pistons of the arresting system go through from the smaller box to the bigger box. So again, um, looks like he's got all the rock now done. They're just detailing it. And again, we prototype something. We're going to make sure that this has a finish and all the joints are perfect to rock. If we've got to fabricate the rock a little bigger in a joint area or make the joint area a little bit bigger by taking away some of the rock, this is the time we're going to do it because when we mold this, we'll pick up every dis disadvantage or advantage that we have in the, in the layout and it'll go forth in every casting. And in this particular one, we had 27 gates at Fort Hood, Texas, uh, military base there for, well, there's two boxes on each side. So it was a lot, a lot of boxes, 54 to be exact. But uh, here we've got all the stone. I think, like I said, they're detailed it. What we've got to start with next is the foam on top which is supposed to be like a concrete top has to be covered you can't just use foam so uh, again just more shots of the detailing of the stone to begin with and as I said now we're starting to cement the top to make it look like a cement top we actually got to affect it in that way so we started out by the sides which you can see a form here on the left as I pan into it that's what kept the bottom straight and gave us a profile to lay mud to then we obviously do the top and now you're going to see the top on the box which is a pitch so water runs off i've done the front and back and i've got the left and right triangular sections still to cast i um, going to use the two that we've already made as forms to screen the last two pieces that we have to do but again this is like a sand wash finish that we then sanded down to affect it to make it look as it is here it's all done all the rock has been painted with a hydro seal to give it a touch up to give it a unification of color and texture and and just detail that's what we've done here we're about to start sealing this and then releasing it because we're going to add rubber and a lot of seal coats three seal coats and about 20 release coats to make sure we can get the rubber off uh, again just like the detail that you're seeing here in the, in the uh, stone and cap we are perfect we've laid plastic on the floor here so as we wouldn't stick to the uh, floor we're prepared now everything's cleaned up dust free and we're about to seal it and release it as i said and get the rubber going which is an arduous little bit of uh with four of us there it was it was a good 16-hour day, I can guarantee you that. It uh, was a long day to hand-apply a bunch of rubber. But I think you're going to see next, well, we're just showing you the tops here. 
They're all finished. Water drains off. Everything's beautiful. I'm trying to think of... Uh, this side has the stone. Nope, this side is butts up against the... Uh, the wall, so the door side here has the finished stone. Yeah, there it is. And, you know, the left side of the driveway, this box will go on the, on the side that Sheck's standing on right now, where the right side, it's going to be over to the left. Here's the f first coats of rubber, which we've got to encapsulate this, if you will, like a sock. The big box especially, I can remember pulling that rubber off, not only the initial prototype, but every casting, it was like a sock, and it had to be rolled off and stretched off, and this one was a little bit better because it was like a box, well, not so much of a sock, but here we've got the finishing, well, I should, in the joints, because the joints were so deep, I didn't want the rubber to have all these catches in the hard mold, so I put liquid nails in the uh, joints because I didn't have enough rubber I didn't think anyway so I put that in there let it dry and then encapsulate it over it here I've used silicone I don't care what I'm throwing in there I'm just filling that joint all the joints to get the rubber to be more of a smooth outer profile that doesn't have catches uh, that the hard mold will get into so here we've got Last coat of rubber's all on. We're ready to start the, uh, well, next day here, we're going to start the hard molds. Uh, the left box, this long 15 foot by 3 by 3, was uh, done in f four pieces, five pieces, where the big box took six pieces. Now here we're just forming up the two half pieces on the top of the long box. One that you can see right here that the guys are actually making. On the other side of this flange that I'm getting up to, you, you'll have another half. So it's two halves on top and on the top of the big box, again, two piece hard mold will give you a release. So we've got that being formed by that little cardboard and wood form on that side with a bunch of material to hold the weight so the form doesn't move. <coughs> so we're going to cast out. Well, we've casted both halves here now. Um, on the tops of both of the boxes, they've got their hard molds left and right, both sides. You can see that here now. And we'll bolt that. The flange gets drilled and bolted before we actually remove it. Both of these will. Next, after that's dry, the next day, I think, or I'm not sure if this was over a two-day period or the same one day, but uh, they'll remove all these sticks and the forms that hold up that top. Because not, not only is there a flange on top, but underneath this cap where the panels that go up the wall to, to hold the rubber, there's going to be... All these have four sides. The big box has four sides, and there's a form in between. So those all get bolted together to make the box, and then the top of that cap gets bolted to it. So it's all bolted together. This box was a five-piece. The big box was a six-piece. Here's the mold taken off of the prototype and ready to start casting. So it's uh, obviously real clean from the first time. Both the hard molds and the rubbers have been taken off. Here's the hard mold with the rubber in it. It's outside in the shop where the long box is still in the warm room there. Now they're going to start casting. This is a 15-foot box, but we're only needing an 8-foot box because we're about to drive this to Milwaukee to enter this contest to even get this contract awarded to us. And uh, I just needed an 8-foot representation of my work to fit in my pickup truck, which you'll see at the end. Uh, it's colored and stained, and we take this particular casting to Milwaukee, and we win the contest. So the guys are actually in the mold. This is like this big one. you got a ladder to climb up and a ladder to climb in, and we feed you the mud in buckets. It's the biggest mold I think I've ever done. I've never gotten in a mold before until this one. I mean, you're in the mold. So here they've got the casting completed. We're going to let this dry overnight. Again, this is a warm room that we're working in here, which we can kick the heat up and get this thing to accelerate. This is about a half-inch casting. Very strong and durable, this formulation that we have, a fiber-reinforced mud. Here it's dry. We've urethaned a little X-brace in there because the back... This side isn't going to have anything holding it. So just to give it a little more rigidity, a little more strength, before we did this, we've taken it out of the mold and we're moving it. It is upside down as they're dollying it out of the warm room and out to the uh, shop where we're going to touch it up and stain it. 
But that's the eight by three by three, three and a half casting that we just did. And as I said, they're bringing it out. The next thing they're going to do is turn it, and then we're going to flip it right side up and start the touch-up and the staining, which is yet to come. And again, the stain can be any color that you want. In this particular case, they kind of specified what they wanted to see, and we made it as such. Box is still pretty green, but now they're putting that big mold, the long box mold, outside next to the big box mold, and they're just taking it apart and setting it down into itself so that we can kind of store it because we didn't have any need to do any more boxes that week, as I recall. So they're just kind of putting it storage-wise. At any rate, here's some more boxes that we made for an outdoor kitchen. Here's the rest of that mold. And then there's a big box that was on the right. And then Jake's actually doing the same type of rock, but this is our 4x8 panel mold. And Jake's doing some casting there. And um, this is, again, going to be just for stock product that uh, people would order to, to veneer a home or whatever. But we make uh, 4x8s, 3x5s, 2x5s, and also make interlocking and non-interlocking versions of not only this particular stone style, but many. So that's kind of what we do. That's just a 4x8 limestone, just like the, the, block, the boxes were. This is just a flat panel. Here's the box all stained and sealed and ready to be loaded onto the truck, ready to go to Milwaukee. And he's just detailing it. Here I just set it out in the yard for a photo op. And then on the truck it goes. And away we go to Milwaukee. My wife and I took it there. If you like this video, share and like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.